Mr. Stone Francis turbine. We already know Francis turbine is a reaction turbine. That means uh, the energy available at the inlet of the turbine is partially pressure energy and partially kinetic energy. It is a medium head turbine. Medium head turbine means uh, the head that is in between 60 meter to 250 meter. This type of turbine that is using in uh, that is the Fakra Nangal and in Hirakud project. So they are reaction turbines are used to using for power production. Here water is taken from this samba. Here is no dam, so that here we are taking water from the samba. So a pipe that is used to carry water from the samba to inlet that is called the suction pipe. This suction pipe is huge diameter pipe. So before starting the centrifugal pump, we have to prime it. By pouring water, it is very difficult to uh, prime it. So that we are using another smaller centrifugal pump to prime this. So for that, we have to first open this air vent and this one. So that water will enter into it. Open means making it parallel to this. After that, we can switch on it, switch on the smaller pump. At that time, first air will come out through this way. If you are placing your hand here, that is, you, will, you can feel it, that is, air is coming out. After some time, water will flow through it continuously. At that time, you have to close it and close this one. That is the priming procedure. After priming, then we have to start the centrifugal pump. This centrifugal pump provides water into the pen stroke. This is the pen stroke. For that, before starting, that is, this delivery valve should be completely closed, fully closed. Here, open, and then that arrow is marked here. So, we have to open it in that way. Closing, that is in the opposite way. Initially, it is fully closed to reduce the starting torque. After fully closing, then you have to switch on the green button. After that, uh, there is a sound change will come. At that time, you can open it. Then the water that is enters into the pen stroke. Here in the pen stroke, to measure the flow, here a venturi meter is provided. This venturi meter is a calibrated one. So the calibrated equation Q equal to KH raised to N for that that is 0.013 into root hm this hm is the manometric head that the manometric head should be in centimeters of mercury in such a way the calibration constant is calibrated here the is inlet and the throat that is pressure is tapped from that to region and it is connected to this mercury manometer. When the water is flowing through this pen stroke, first we have to <coughs> bend it. For the, if there is any air in that line, we have to remove it. For that, initially we have to open it. While open it, the first air bubbles will come out and after that a continuous flow of water will come. Now it is not started though, so that air and the water will not come out. After that, the right side portion that is we have to put it in the bed position after releasing air and the water after a continuous flow of water close this one that is the bending procedure and these two knobs should be in the read position this is in the read position then when the water is reaching here you have to open this valve here also the direction of open that is marked so when you open it, water from the pen stroke first enters to the scroll casing. This is the scroll casing. Inside that, there is a set of stay vein and a gateway. From the uh, scroll casing, water that is enters to the stay vein. And then the water direct into the gateway. Gateway direct the water into the runner blade. Here, in order to measure the pressure at the inlet of the turbine, here a pressure gauge is provided. Its unit is feet of water. 
if you multiply it with the point 306 then you will get in meters of water when the fluid passing through the stay vein gate vein and the runner blade pressure energy goes on decreasing and that pressure energy is converting into kinetic energy so at the exit of the turbine the pressure is less than atmospheric so in order to measure that pressure here a vacuum gauge is provided here that is also in feet of water here the exit pressure of the turbine is less than atmospheric and the tail rise pressure is atmospheric so in order to discharge water from turbine exit to tail rise an area increase in pipe is using that is called a draft tube this draft tube is only in reaction turbine that is here it is Kaplan turbine and the Francis turbine in these two turbines this uh, draft tubes are provided and uh, one more thing here the number of stay vein is half the number of the gate veins uh, normally there may be 12 number of gate veins then at that time here 6, uh, six is the number of stay veins uh, and uh, in this turbine in order to control the quantity of water we are adjusting the width between the gateway. This is the profile of that, and the, the, this gap is adjusting. For that, here is a threaded screw. By using this wheel, we can rotate it so that the gap that is changing. In the performance test, that is, we provided that in the three and a half rotation of the screw and the when the water passing through that, the turbine start running. When the sufficient quantity of water striking on it, the turbine start running. And here there is no power generation. It is the steady purpose so that this turbine shaft coupled with the dynamometer. Dynamometer is a power absorbing device. It absorbs power from the turbine shaft. Here this is a rock drum dynamometer. Here two spring balance are provided. Initially, the uh, turbine is uh, turbine has to run at a no load condition at a rated RPM. Here the rated RPM is seven ton, so that you have to bring the needle to seven ton by controlling, or that is by opening this valve to particular quantity of water, so that the needle is at a seven ton. Now the turbine is running at a rated RPM at a no load condition. Then you have to note the pressure gauge reading, vacuum gauge reading and also the manometer reading, HL and the XR, right limb reading and the left limb reading. After that, we have to apply the load. So in order to apply the load, before starting the experiment, we have to find the maximum load, how much load we can apply in this turbine. That is based on the specification. Here, HP is 4.5. 7.5 and the maximum head is 7 meters speed that is 710 rpm and the dia of the brake drum is 1 foot from which we know that the bp brake power bp equal to 2 pi nd by 60 that is 2 into pi into n here it is 7 ton and the torque in order to measure the torque that is spring balance that is dynamometer was a uh, reading say s1 minus s2 we have to take uh, that uh, is in kilogram so that uh, we have to convert uh, that into newton into radius of the brake drum that is 4.15 meter divided by 60 this is 4.75 into 746 from which uh, s1 minus s2 max uh, we can find out that is uh, the effective load maximum effective load that we can find out it is normally 32 kg so first you have to calculate that load after calculating that load then we have to start the pump then open this valve so water strikes on it now turbine is running at no load condition at the right arm after that we have to apply the load while applying load speed of the turbine decreasing so that before start before applying load first we have to increase the quantity of water by open the valve 
when the valve is um, uh, opened more so that the speed of the turbine is more than rated speed we can bring the speed to 900 or 850 after that uh, we can apply the load while applying load speed that is decreasing when the speed reaches 710 then wait one or two minutes to stay uh, to a steady state and then not pressure gauge reading vacuum gauge reading yes spring balance reading s1 and s2 and the manometer reading in such a way you have to take minimum six set of reading and the maximum eight set of reading and for the uh, last reading in order to take the last reading you have to open that uh, valve fully this valve that is valve near to the centrifugal pump that has to be fully open and also the valve here also to be uh, fully open so maximum quantity of water strikes on the turbine and the turbine speed become maximum when the speed reaches maximum then you can apply the load while applying load the speed that is decreasing when the speed comes to 710 not the corresponding reading pressure gauge reading vacuum gauge reading flow meter reading etc then after that after taking all the reading then we have to reduce the load that is starting and stopping must be at a no load condition so that to release the load in order to release the load you have to simply rotate this one while reducing the load at that time speed of the turbine is increasing so in order to maintain the speed at a rated position so that you have to reduce the quantity of water also by rotating this wheel so by gradually reduce the load and gradually reduce the quantity of water so that you can maintain the speed is 700 after releasing all the load then at that time that is this rock is completely in loose condition after releasing all the load then you can switch off that red button press the red button then the machine is off position and after that you are, you can calculate the output power and input power etc that is in this case suppose at one particular value particular position that is the speed of the turbine 7 ton and then manometer reading hr uh, right limb reading height in the right limb and uh, left limb reading suppose if it is 9 in 19 cm and then it is uh, 12 cm then the level difference hm that is the manometer head hr minus hl that is 19.19 minus 19 12 that is 7 cm of mercury using this data we can find out the discharge discharge q is equal to 0.013 into root hm this hm should be in cm of mercury so only to put that difference no need to convert that into meters so that the answer become in say, meter cube per second that is the discharge and then suppose the spring balance reading s1 and s2 suppose if it is 28 and 3 kg s1 and s2 from which we can find out the output power here the output power is 2 pi nd by 60 that is bp 2 pi nd by 60 torque into angular velocity that is 2 into pi into speed is 7 10 So 7 ton into torque S1 minus S2 that is 28 minus 3 into it is in kg. So multiply it with a 9.81. It is in kg and then radius of the brake drum and then 60. Then it is in water. Here the brake drum drive meter. Suppose this is the uh, rope drum. A rope that is wound around the drum. Here one tension is upward and another tension is uh, another one downward. This S1 minus S2 is the effective load, and the torque is in newton meter. So here the radius, radius of the brake drum, it is uh, diameter one foot. So one foot is equal to point three zero six meter. Half of that is point one five. So that here you have to multiply it with point one five. Then this output power is in water, and then what is the input power here? Here. 
no down water is taken from the sump. So this centrifugal pump supplies water to the pen stroke. So here the input power is output power of the pump. Okay. What is output power of the pump? It is rho GQH. That is weight of water into height. Again, as to which it is uh, lifting. So W into H. So that W is specific weight into Q. That is rho GQ into H. So suppose the rho that is 1000 density of water. G 9.81 and Q is 0.013 into rho HM. And then this H. In order to get that H, here the pressure gauge and vacuum gauge readings we have to take and also we have to measure the level difference from this platform level to center of both the gauges and that level difference also we have to take. Suppose here that level difference is 22.5 centimeter. So total head equal to pressure gauge reading. This is the pressure gauge reading. That pressure gauge reading is in feet of water. So, the, uh, he converted that into meters of water. So, pressure gauge reading into 0 0.306 plus vacuum gauge reading into 0 0.306 plus level difference between these two. Suppose if it is 22, then 0.225 meter. That is the total head. Substitute that value here so that you can find the output power. That output, uh, sorry, not output power, input power. That input power is also in water. Then we have to find the efficiency. Here the efficiency that is we already know that it is the ratio of what we wanted to what we have to pay for. We need output power. We have to supply input power into 100. Then here output power of the pump is 2 pi nd by 60. And the input power is rho gqh from which we can find the efficiency. After finding efficiency, we have to plot a graph. That is here. The independent quantity here, it is the output power. We are changing the uh, load so that uh, we can find out, based on that, uh, we can find out output power. This output power versus efficiency and output power versus input power. These are the two graphs you have to plot. Here, this is power, power producing device so that the uh, abscissa quantity is either BP or load. Anyone you can take based on that, uh, you can take uh, input, uh, um, abscissa quantity that is input power and the efficiency. That is the aim of this performance test. That is to check the that is constant speed test that is conducting to check the performance of that turbine. And uh, in this turbine,